what is it that you value? Money, health, maybe status? Well, these things are all temporary. But many people believe that we only really have one thing, which is everlasting, our soul. But just how valuable is such a thing? Throughout history and even to this day, there are people who have traded it for power or success and in doing so have come face to face with the Lord of the Flies himself. Here are 10 people who sold their souls to the devil. Number 10 is Robert Johnson. There's something about the number 27. Many famous musicians such as Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, Jonas Joplin and Jimi Hendrix have all passed away at that age. One of the oldest examples of this is the story of Robert Johnson, and it's a tale that's intertwined with Saint. Johnson was a famous blues musician in the 1930s, but passed away under mysterious circumstances in 1938 at the age of 27. Many have linked this to the bizarre account he gave of meeting the devil at a crossroads when he was younger. In return for Johnson's soul, the devil granted Johnson unrivaled talent as musician, benefited greatly, and his music influenced the likes of the Rolling Stones decades later. It seems, however, that the devil cashed in on the deal all too early, bringing the musician's career and life to an early macabre conclusion. Number nine is Niccolo Paganini. Niccolo Paganini was born in Italy just before Halloween in 1782. He began playing the violin at just 11 years old, and by the time he was 15, he was performing to large audiences. Paganini was so good that whispers of an occult deal with the devil began to circulate. He was able to play 12 notes per second, which at the time was thought to be humanly impossible. A witness claimed that he saw the devil appear next to Paganini on stage during a performance, and rumors persisted that Paganini had entombed the soul of a woman inside of his favorite violin through a satanic ritual. When Paganini was on his deathbed in 1840, he told a priest to leave before giving him the last rites, which would have allowed him entry to heaven. Some believe this was because the violinist knew that he was going elsewhere. Number eight is Father Uraba Grandier. The last person you would suspect of selling their soul to the devil would be a holy man, but that's exactly what Father Urban Grandier did. The priest grew in influence during the 17th century when he served at a church in Loudun, France. Rumors began to grow amongst locals that all was not well within the walls of the church. A number of scandals tarnished his reputation when it was revealed that he had been seducing locals, but after this, several nuns who served with Grandier came forward and accused him of ritual satanic behavior. They claimed that Grandier was in fact a powerful sorcerer who had sold his soul to the devil through a contract. When the handwritten contract was allegedly stolen by a demon from Lucifer and handed to authorities, this sealed Grandier's fate as a master of the dark arts. Number seven is Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley was known as the Great Beast 666 and the wickedest man in the world. He became involved in the occult during the early parts of the 20th century and became a member of the secret societies such as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Caught in a power struggle with other sorcerers, Crowley had traveled extensively unearthing powerful dark practices. Claiming to be in league with sinister spirits and demons, his influence grew until he declared himself more powerful than the gods. Although Crowley stated that he believed the devil to be unimportant and even a myth, Several of his followers have since suggested that this was a ruse and that the source of his influence was a twisted pact with Satan. Number six is Giuseppe Tartini. Deals with the devil come in many shapes and sizes, from blood oaths to sacrificial rituals, or the simple signing of a contract, 
but in the case of Giuseppe Tartini, the devil made himself known through dreams. Like an ancient Freddy Krueger, the devil was said to have infiltrated the mind and dreams of the famous 18th century composer. In one nightmarish dream, Tartini was visited by the devil as he lay in his bed. The shadowy figure stood at the foot of his bed, conversing with him. Whatever pact Tartini made that night, it certainly had an influence on his music. Tartini's most famous composition is called Devil's Trill Sonata, which to this day remains difficult to play. Perhaps Tartini was able to play it with the help of his trusted violin, an instrument many believed was forged in hell itself. Number five is Richard Ramirez. Known as the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez brought a reign of terror down on all of those around him. Throughout the early 1980s, he amassed 13 victims in El Paso, Texas, and he became even more infamous for his creepy way of speaking to the press. Many despicable criminals like Ramirez have twisted motivations, but some believe one of his was a pact with the devil. Ramirez was heavily involved with Satanism, and would often leave macabre satanic pentagrams wherever he committed his vile crimes. Some have gone as far as to suggest that Ramirez didn't just commit his crimes in the name of the devil, but that he had sold his eternal soul to the beast. If there's any justice, that deal went sour for him in 2013 when he finally met his maker. Number four is MS-13. MS-13 is a gang which originated in Los Angeles during the 1970s. Originally called the Mata Savatrucha Stoners, they soon morphed into a powerful, violent crime gang which dominated the area. Even in those early days, the gang was led by hardcore Satanists who had sold their soul to the devil. Soon, this became a prerequisite at the time to join the gang. Now an international gang with huge influence, the satanic rituals continue as MS-13 removes anyone who stands in their way. Many members who have spoken with the press anonymously have described how they feel the devil is with them when they commit their crimes, which gives them a twisted source of power. It's rumored that the gang has over 10,000 members, many of whom have been involved in ritual devil worship themselves. Number three is Nikolai Ogolobayak. Nikolai Ogolobayak is the leader of a satanic group. It is said that when committing their terrible crimes, the group must strike at their victims exactly 666 times. In 2008, he committed such a crime in a remote woodland area in Russia. When they were finally caught, one of his followers stated that he believed the devil would help him escape justice while another spoke about how his life improved financially when he sold his soul to Satan. For many, what makes Nikolai's story so compelling and disturbing is that at the same time, he made the transition from being a devout Christian choir boy to giving up his eternal soul to the devil. This transition is not uncommon, and in some cases, practicing religious people have secretly been carrying out satanic rituals in forbidden locations. Number two is Christia Pike. When Christia Pike became jealous of a fellow student named Colleen Slemmer over a boy, Pike decided to remove Slemmer from the picture. This act was carried out brutally, but it was also motivated by Christia Pike's dabbling in the dark arts. She had entered into a coven of sort with her boyfriend, Tadaryl Ship and another friend called Shadola Peterson. Their crime against Colleen was tragic and had all the hallmarks of a satanic ritual. When they were finally arrested, a satanic Bible was found in their possession. All three admitted devil worship and had pledged their souls to the source of all evil. Christia Pike had since tried to escape from prison and had continued her violent satanic behavior even while locked away from society. And number one is the Ripper Crew. As we've seen throughout this video, groups of people who have sold their souls to the devil often band together to commit terrible acts. They do this in an attempt to enter hell. The Ripper Crew are amongst the most notorious of such groups. Led by Robin Gecht. 
a rumored protege of John Wayne Gacy's, throughout 1981 to 1982 in Chicago, Gecht invited three other men to sell their souls to the devil and commit crimes in his name. Eventually known as the Ripper Crew due to their sadistic nature of the crime sprees they committed, they became synonymous with satanic cults as their behavior was among the most barbaric ever seen in the city. Though Gecht continues to deny his crimes, the evidence against him was overwhelming as was their devotion to the dark world of violent Satanism.